Um, 9.59, but we will start early. We will open our workshop with a update from the Public Works Director, Gordy Kelsey. Good morning. Mm -hmm. We have uh, one item on your consent agenda, and that's the contract bond between Klickitat County and Frank Gurney Construction, and uh, that's for the guardrail repair project. Uh, we also have a payment approval for James Dean construction in the amount of $927,379.20, and that's for the Courtney Road project that's ongoing. On the construction side, um, our signs and guidepost project, um, they have punch list items, and we're waiting for materials. The signs are one of those things that are delayed these days. Um, we waited for signs on West Darland for several months, and so I think that's kind of the trend for these as well. I know we have ongoing problems and issues trying to get signs just for maintenance. Um, Roosevelt grade paving, just uh, working through the punch list items and with the uh, pavement, out of spec pavement issue as well. So that one will have a life of its own. How do they, if I may, how do you, I mean, I know they do cores is how they did the bottom mm -hmm. part where it's sort of visual evidence of uh, an issue, but how do we, I mean, sometimes it's not obvious and, you know, I am assuming we're not going to just core the whole no. project. We, and is it, we did, but at pretty pretty spaced yeah, out we, intervals yeah. to try to narrow down yeah, where the, yes. and I'm assuming the bat, I mean, they know what the mix was when they were mixing it and which, cause that wasn't all done on a single day. No, no, so you take samples went, as you're yeah, doing on, it. You take samples as you're doing it, they pull it right out of the plant and then they, they actually, what they call cook it. So they separate it with heat. And then they can tell what the makeup is of the asphalt. And if that passes, and it did in this instance during the whole time, then you you typically don't core. I mean, you could during the job, but it cost us more money. Right. Um, but when we saw that the pavement was bad, then we went back and cored. Right. But so, but the stuff that was that obviously was bad passed its cook test when it was mixed. But so it, what's this what's the likely I mean is it possible that there's other that passed its test that that area probably didn't get because you only test every 2000 ton. Oh. So you know that that's like I think 1200 ton so and it was at the end of the day, which is always suspect. You know, you work in kids, you know, everybody at the end, we want to get done. We, yeah, yeah. Everything's good. It's yeah. great. Let's, <laughs> let's wrap up. <laughs> yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. You're building. No, no. Up. I just want to be sure, you know, yeah. are we going to be able to narrow down where they got to fix what really needs fixed and make good on it versus are we going to have some potential liability out there, you know, three years from now when the rest of the road falls apart? Can we go back on them? Yeah, so what we're in the process of doing, we've narrowed it down to that that first section between Highway 14 and the cutoff for the company Republic's Road. And so that's where we're doing a lot more testing this week. So we have two days of testing and coring in that section alone. And then those cores will be sent to a forensic lab where they'll determine what the lost life of that stretch of pavement is. And that'll help us determine what has to happen? Will the asphalt company cover the cost of the coring and testing if they're liable? If they're, it's their mistake. Might be more of a David call than. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in my world, they should be. Yeah. I mean, if I was, you know, being a general contractor, if it was it would my. Depend on what was in the contract. Yeah, whether it was in the. I mean, I know these are big, big companies, and they're not. But usually, I like for me, if it was my mistake, then I'm own it. And yeah. I mm -hmm. should fix it and I should make it as if it never happened, which means I would cover the cost. But yeah, it's it's and that is a significant that, cost. Yeah. It yeah. is. A, it is. Well, yes. I mean, when you're talking about, oh, we're going to be coring for two days. I can. It's like 
I'm, I'm hearing dollar signs. Yes, yes, it's expensive. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I'm but it's only that. mainly between 14 and the, the yes. cutoff. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. At least that's a short section. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still we were thick, and so at today's hot mix prices, it's expensive. Yes, it's, it's a lot of money. Expensive. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Courtney Road, things have dried out and they look like it'll continue to dry out. And so they're able to get back out there and, and uh, hit it hard with the Mass X and embankment <laughs> construction. So that's what they're working on this week and they will be for quite a while. Uh, click it that path. Um, we have to go out for that concrete um, sub and then our plan is to pave it sometime toward the middle to end of August and uh, wrap that project up. So it should be after uh, Canyon Days. That's probably where we're looking for a time frame. Uh, courthouse parking lots, we plan to advertise that next week. We're doing our final reviews and getting our plans together this week and, and it will uh, be on your agenda to advertise next week. Um, small Works guardrail project, the bond is on your agenda today for signature for Frank Gurney. And on the maintenance side, we're patching, um, doing some mowing and grading, and that's um, pretty much both sides of the county or all over the county. And then we also are taking down a large tree on Rio Vista in White Salmon. And that'll happen, I think, tomorrow is the scheduled date for that. Uh, let's see, we have uh, facility side, the building, uh, landscaper needs to return for some minor adjustments to their systems. And then what they thought they repaired on the uh, um, small island that somebody ran into and damaged the tree and the sprinkler system. It, either they didn't check their system when they made the repair or the damage is maybe somewhere farther underneath some of our concrete which would be really a bummer so um, we'll see what happens is it leaking water or something yeah so when they turned it on again we turned the system back on it's fill, basically filling up that island with water instead of working like it's supposed to okay with the drip system so so we'll see they'll hopefully they just didn't check their cyst, their repair and there was something else leaking. That's that's our hope. Um, we still have the blind down in the Mount Adams room down below this one that needs to be finished and repaired. And uh, I think we're struggling to get the blind contractor back, the, our prime contractor is. Um, we came up with a fix for the remaining locations um, for HVAC. Um, in the entrance to health, um, there was actually a change that we can't find documentation for. Um, so they, the, the intake for providing hot or cold air comes right off the main manifold. So there's no, um, with the flex ducting that provides kind of a dampening effect and gets rid of a lot of the sound. And uh, so that, that they said, this is why we're getting all the sound in there. Um, so they'll have to, and that, of course, as a hard lid, like it does in here. So in order to fix it, they're going to have to uh, move some of the hard lid and repair it at some point. So that's the solution there. Um, and then up in building planning in their main large open area, um, the motor for the uh, fan is too close to the intake air intake that's up there so the only solution to that one is uh, put some kind of a dampener inside that big open ductwork um, and then there's one office in my area that uh, has significant vibration and sound and it's basically the exhaust um, fan for the whole building it sits right above that office and probably should not have been there. On the, is that up, on yeah, the roof? up on the roof. Yeah. And when you go up on the roof, it's the loudest piece of equipment up there. And so when you turn it off, it gets really quiet in that office. So um, there's some work on that. And uh, so we'll get there, but uh, there's a solution, I think. And we'll wait to see what the contractor says, because some of it might be 
um, them. Some of it might be, you know, design wasn't enough, adequate enough, or wasn't constructed the way it was supposed to. So we'll, we'll sort through that. But uh, we do have a path forward, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> the office in, for HR and weed that we've been working on for a long time is ready for Elizabeth to move in. So she's just waiting for uh, IT to move her equipment over and then she'll move over. And that should be done. Um, the HVAC replacement for the Pioneer Center, um, all the equipment actually showed up uh, ahead of schedule. It wasn't supposed to be here until September, um, which is when the contractor had the work scheduled. Um, they are booked until then. And, but we now have the equipment. So we've asked that they um, keep, keep us in mind if their schedule opens up and they're able to come in because we're still using the portable units in will be. seniors yeah, this summer until um, they get that new unit installed. So, so basically a year. So if we have a unit go down in a commercial unit, it's a year out some, in some of these cases, nine months to a year so. Um, or you got to get them fixed before they go down. Yeah, that's this is really bad time for most things. Yeah. So uh, the radio site. Uh, we're we're going to start work on the road next Monday. Uh, let's see, follow up issues. So looking for storage room in the courthouse for Superior Court, who currently has none and their um, chairs, tables, TVs on stands, and other items are all just in lots of different places, mostly the jury room. And so the judge and Mary Jo have asked that we find them a place to put this stuff. Um, and so some of it's stored in, our, in the basement currently just out, um, some chairs that they move in there when they need them. And uh, so we, we looked at one area that you guys gave up and uh, that's not feasible or possible. And so we looked at where else could we build something in the basement and, and most of the rest of the open area is filled with pipes. And they aren't like they're old boiler pipes. They're actually um, the sewer pipes that we do use. So you can't do anything with that. So it's really not possible more than what we store there now. So the other area that we, we thought of um, was the old, uh, vault where HR was. We were going to have a small conference room in there, but it probably makes more sense to just utilize that for the storage. And then we can just move those things up and down the elevator for Superior Court as needed. So, and we'll still have the big conference room in there um, and then the break room. But yeah. uh, so if yeah. that makes sense, that's what we'll do. That I, makes sense. If they need more conference rooms, they can come over here. Yeah, right. True. Yep. So, but it's always going to be a little weird having the conference room in the vault. <laughs> yeah, I left the door on though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll it'll make a better storage room. Yeah, I'm going to step room. out for a minute. Just a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. From an airplane. Oh. I just had one question. Um, how far behind is Jay? You broke up. We got how far behind, but I have no idea what you're talking about. James Dean. James Dean, how far behind are they going to be on their Mass X and their, are they looking to get any construction completed this year? <laughs> yeah, they're going to get it. Uh, I'll follow up next week. I think they're if they can get through this week and the next week, the weather gives them a break. They should they should be back on schedule. Sounds like it. Oh, is on there. Okay, thanks. Okay, dedication plaque. So, do we have a new location for that, or do we want to just mount it uh, in the mailbox area or somewhere else? I don't even remember what we decided it was so well long ago. We were going to see if you got input back from any anybody else that might have had uh, thoughts on citizens that might have had thoughts on it. Um, see, if I'm remembering correctly, 
the answer was not outside it was inside by the tv but i don't know that with the tv there it might look weird over there on that wall so i i don't know i don't wherever you want to put it wherever it's practical put it in dave's office should be anything but outside anywhere but outside yeah okay, okay. I like outside better, but I guess with vandalism and wear and tear and tarnish, it makes sense not to be so. Okay. We'll look for a location by the TV. If it doesn't work, then we still have that other location too. So we'll, we'll get it installed. And let's see last. So I got a, I didn't, I wasn't around, but Ken Marvel came by and, and had mentioned that um, you had expressed an interest in adding some old uh, historic photos at different locations in the uh, this building. Um, so I don't know if there were thoughts on where or how many or what what you were thinking. Oh, well, that's kind of the the question we find ourselves in. So I met with the Historical Society to essentially get their permission to use some of their old photos because I've had the conversation with my seatmates about uh, putting some old photos in the building. We haven't decided on how many or where or what, um, but um, conversations with the Historical Society are very slow in coming. Um, I think his name's Joanne at the photo company. Is that her name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I talked with her about doing the, the uh, prints, uh, and she has most of the photos because she's worked with the Historical Society before. Um, so it, it's kind of a, I've asked again, and I've sent, I sent an email two or three weeks ago to the Historical Society, haven't heard back, sent one again five days ago, haven't heard back. That's either, do you, do you want involved in the project or do you want to just give us permission and then she can run with the project? Um, and, and it's kind of cricket. So um, the thought with my seatmates was Mr. Anderson wanted to do the conference rooms with uh, artwork of the mountain that they represent doesn't not necessarily historical uh, -huh. uh but then doing some of the hallway stuff in um in old pictures uh, and i figured we would get a group together when approval got approved to walk through and see how many or where or what um and then uh, get a quote from her to print and whatnot but again i'm i'm still waiting on permission from the historical society <laughs> They, they brought some photos over, so I'm, I'm assuming they're on board. Ken did, did. did she, did they drop a CD? No, he just, he, he, he uh, brought a couple of old ones of Goldendale and then one of um, over in the Trout Lake area that kind of shows um, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens and Adams kind of all in one photo, but it's taken from Skamania County. Okay. Well, but, uh, Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I figured, you know, when it when it came time to be dealing with that, I don't know if we want to, you know, split the floors by district or by theme or or what have you. But, you know, if they're on board, like I said, she's got CD drive of all the old photos and we can, um, you know, kind of go through a snapshot on the computer to figure out which ones we actually want in here. Sure. Um, and then um my other thinking was unlike these that are framed in glass uh, i'm kind of worried about somebody bumping them in the hallway or some little kid bumping them in the hallway and then the thing falling off the wall uh, and you also have the weight and you also have the cost of framing um, so to do one of these they're about 250 bucks a pop uh, if you just did wrap around canvas uh print on they're only about 120 bucks a pop yeah and then if it, somebody knocks it off the ground on the ground you didn't destroy the building either so um i think Jeannie said they'd be much cheaper on canvas yeah. okay yeah so that that's the deal if they're in you know i'm be happy to go over and talk to her and um, she's all game to walk through and you know i'll just set up a time when if i don't know if you want to be in on that or you want to designate somebody uh to be in on that or yeah so we can we know what what's the thought is and because we'll probably be the ones putting them up so right yeah uh -huh. then if you could identify too because there may be some areas that are not suitable that right they might you know for 
logistical reasons, you right? Know, safety or right. something. It's like, oh no, you you can't put that. Back. I don't want it to turn into a giant art gallery by any means, but I, I you know make it a little more lived in, a little more homey. Yeah. Um, so um, okay. All right, I'll talk to her and then I'll set something up with you and and uh, at least get a idea to present to the full. Yeah, Ken stops by, but I, I'd like to get his phone number so we can actually be, I can be here at the same time and and maybe we can get that uh, disc or the thumb drive or whatever they hey, have. She's got the thumb drive of all the, the stuff. And it's okay. just like I told her, I'm like, I but I want their permission first. I don't want to use a photo that's theirs without their permission. And, <coughs> um, and but um, I made a presentation to that board and there's, I don't know, eight of them in there and, you know, six seven of them were excited about the idea mm -hmm. as long as it wasn't going to cost them anything um so but it's it's moving very slow so maybe you have better connections to speed it up a little bit we'll just keep after it yeah okay that's that's it for our list unless you were dreaming no, up some no. stuff while you were home no 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 dream i do no have dream. one came up on a uh, Facebook thread, which you may or may not have seen about this building. Um, complaints from business owners on Main Street that claim um, employees are parking on Main Street to come to work in this building. And it's taking up parking from them in front of their businesses. They're claiming that they've had conversations with said employees and pretty much just get told off um, I don't know the accuracy of said claims. Um, seems a reach to me, but um, if we could send an all staff email, and I don't know whether you want to do it or come from the board, have a little more weight behind it that that tells county staff that they are not allowed to park sure. on Main Street and then go from there. Yeah, maybe we can draft something up and send it to Lee. Over a block over, yeah. Yeah, like by in front of the uh, pharmacy, that type of thing. Yeah. I can't, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not doubting the veracity of the person, but that seems. It seems odd. But it seems then, odd. When, when we said no parking in the courthouse parking lot, I noticed the same couple of employees continuing to park in the courthouse parking lot and walk across the street over here. So um, it's possible. Let's just send a reminder. And then I've told those businesses Ike. that if they I mean it's not <laughs> right, but, it's, but if they I told those businesses if they find somebody yeah. over there to let me know directly, and then I'll let you know directly on the day it's happening, and and we'll find the, the perpetrators. You yeah, I have, when it was when we had less parking before the courthouse lot was finished, I I've actually seen that occur. Yeah, and, but I don't I haven't seen it since. I mean, now that we have more parking out in mm -hmm. front and I, it. I haven't seen. I mean, there was a couple it. days during all of that, you know, where there was court was going where it was hard to yeah, find a uh -huh. place to park anywhere. As I said, I never That's said anything about it because it was small fraction. It was happened regular or irregularly. Yeah. But if there is parking on Main Street, we need to yeah. fix that. One. Of course, so. I know there never were any Main Street business employees that parked in the county. Well, that's that's the no. com yeah. main complaint. <laughs> that's the main complaint is that they used to park their cars in that and open up Main Street, and now that that parking isn't there, they're upset that they don't have some place to park. So what happens is, I think, my opinion, I think they don't park in front of their business; they park in front of their neighbor's business, and then that pisses their neighbor off. So their neighbor parks in front of their business, and none of them want to actually park over here. So. We'll, we'll see when the parking gets fixed and if the city needs to uh, buy a few lots over there to give them more Main Street parking, um, that's up to the city. But as long as we keep our employees off of Main Street. Yes, sir. We don't really have any authority to do that in their private vehicles. We can suggest. We can suggest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no potential discipline that I'm aware of that would apply to somebody parking in a public place. Our suggestion. Strongly Wait. suggest. No, I understand that. Yeah, I, I think once we get the other lot done, 
you know, there'll be should be adequate parking. But, you know, the city's goal for this area is no parking. Nobody has to build parking because it's the downtown business core. And right or wrong, that's the zoning requirement here. Right. So but we've provided a lot of parking. It, and we have and we will and it will be more. The problem is it's all on this side of Main Street. Yeah. And I think you have people that don't want to walk a block. So I, I can't control that, but if I can strongly encourage our employees to um, stop getting me yelled at, that would be great. All right. Other than that, I have nothing. Anything else, sir? Yep. I'm Perfect. Good. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Make sure he's got some really fun work to do today on his first day back. Yeah, I right. did work in the whole time. <laughs> 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 I'm working on it. Learn. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, sir. Um, Casey will join me in the executive session. Uh, Jen doesn't have an update today. She's preparing for the quarterly report that'll be scheduled on a Tuesday in July, yet to be determined. So today is um, Jeff from IT, and a couple things we wanted to talked about the one on the agenda is staffing um we're pondering so we're pondering out loud with with the commissioners to see if potentially there's some interest we have a box on our org chart for help desk one and two in the same box and then we have an it administrator and we're authorized for two fte uh, we are unable to fill the system administrator to date that's the one that became vacant a right. month or two ago. Okay. So what we're thinking of, Jeff has got some strong applicants for the for help desk. And so we're kind of kicking around the idea of uh, asking permission, not today, to add the IT help desk one and two to the administrator box, basically grow our own have somebody come in who could be the help desk person and then over course of time move into the administrative position. Uh, right now, I mean, we could promote from from uh, from the help desk over to the to the IT side, but you know, other departments have kind of uh, looked into kind of growing their own, so to speak, bringing them in at a lower level and then uh, with time and experience moving into the administrator job. So uh, we can't currently do that the way our chart is set up. So um, because we already have the IT help desk position filled, that box is filled with one oh. FTE. OK, that's why I was. Yeah, it's already filled. So you could do that if then, the box was open. You could do that and then move them. So right. you have IT help desk, and then you have this. <clears throat> do you shoot them all the way there at once, or do you build them into it? So the we're question. kicking that around and just want to get some feedback whether you thought that was something that you'd be willing to listen to. Uh, make sense to, to, to make that that is there a way to um, I guess I would say stagger um, the wage level from I mean it's going to jump from one to the other it's a pretty big jump is there any steps in there to get well I think the help desk one and two positions um, are less than the system administrator and, and that may be a logical um, stagger built in already it would just be adding those adding that other position to the uh, not changing the number of FTE, not changing the budget. Uh, actually, potentially could be a lower budget for a while, but just having a lower level. We've talked about in other departments a training level and entry level, and giving them time to to work into the uh, minimum requirements of the higher job. So, and that would allow you to have a second IT help desk over here, training. So when movement, I get it, makes sense. Yeah, this gives us more flexibility. So we just ask you to kind of ponder it, and then we're in. Keep kicking around, and we may come back asking for verbal, or at least present the uh, the concept to you again um, more formally to see if that's something that you'd be willing to consider. Um, but as yet, we're unable, even at the higher wage that uh, you approved for the system administrator, we're yet to get qualified applicants, in. or any, or any. We, we have to train from within every <laughs> yeah, or so any. It makes yeah. sense. Okay. Again, not asking you today, just kind of running the concept by you uh, ahead of time. A couple of things that um, Jeff and I wanted to talk to you about and answer any questions. So 
there were two things when we built the budget that were unknowns that we knew were going to occur this year. One was the copiers, and we've dealt with that. The other one is the renewal for the G Suite, the Google Suite license. Uh, nothing goes down. Uh, everything goes up. It's not up till November, but we're having trouble getting numbers from them. November would be too late for a supplemental, so we're pushing them pretty hard to try and get us um, the information sooner than later. But in addition to the G Suite software, um, there's archive software that... Well, it's part of G Suite, actually, but um, G Suite continues to... Um, every time we lose an employee or an employee switches departments, we have to archive their data. And uh, it's about half the cost of a normal license, but it's adding up. Um, so that's going to kind of have a huge effect on Is our that licensing forever. Until somebody gives us um, some kind of direction on um, retention. And... Yeah. But either way, uh, we haven't had G Suite for seven years yet. So if it, if we were to uh, arc, or remove the archives after the maximum retention period of seven years, we'd still have a ton of archive licenses. Even employees in house who move from department to department, <laughs> especially in CGIS departments, uh, we have to maintain that separate. So one employee could have five different accounts. Why is that? Why do you have to switch email accounts when they move from department to department? Because the data belongs to the department. So any any or anything that they created inside of that department belongs to that department. If they needed emails forwarded from that person so they continue receiving critical information, they have to have that as well. Not all departments do. Some some allow the person to take the email, but some don't. Some employees are good about it. They get an email from their previous job forwarding it. But if it's a critical time sensitive email or a or a uh, public records request or something, then um, most departments or offices don't want to risk uh, having it. That's why when folks leave, it's generally assigned to somebody in that department so that there's somebody monitoring those emails on a daily basis. So uh, sometimes they they keep their old email if, if the two departments agree and yeah. there's no um, issues like a CGIS. Um, sensitive data or sensitive anything data like that. Issue. So. I don't see a way to get out of the increased expense. So. Uh, I think the only way would be having some kind of retention policy for email, but it, it would be, yeah, Less turnover. We need to have a retention policy for emails, but the other issues on base, as you may recall, um, you authorized the clerk to, um, I think, expend ten or eleven thousand um, dollars on, on base. Uh, the bill came in at sixteen thousand, not because of any work the clerk has done. I want to be clear about that. It is the work that we're doing to make on base. Um, available to other departments, as we've discussed with the commissioners over the last year. There's quite a bit of interest in some departments about using uh, on base, such as adult probation, juvenile, I think. Public, right now, public works public is works. what we're working on. So uh, we're going to try and absorb that in our current budget. Uh, we're not sure if we can, but we're going to try. And then next year, that cost will build in our new budget. So, uh, so any um, organization-wide cost we'll try and build in the budget next year. So again, nothing the clerk has done, just additional work for us to prepare it uh, or for it to be usable by other departments. Just want to give you a heads up on that. Um, speaking of supplementals, you may recall that last year we you approved a supplemental to help us with the installation and implementation of the, the new phone lines that, that did away with uh, long distance charges and phone line charges. Um, we didn't get the implementation done until January, February, so we couldn't use obviously the money that was in the supplemental. So we're about fifteen thousand in the hole for this for the implementation. So um, we're monitoring our budget, but more likely that will be in the supplemental this year uh, to cover that. It was approved last year, but of course money just rolled back into the general fund bucket, <coughs> but that cost is still there. Um, Anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. Any questions? <clears throat> if, if I may, <clears throat> can we go back to the G Suite that we don't know until November? <clears throat> what kind of dollars are we? I mean, I know. Uh, well, typically the last wide, it's got to be a pretty big number. Um, the last three years, we've had like a 50% discount, but that um, 
that uh, agreement it ends this year. So we don't know the exact number. Um, if we pay full price, it'd be like 90,000. Um, but the last three years, it's been around 50,000. 50, so we potentially are looking at a $40,000 increase. Likely we'll be able to negotiate another discount, but um, worst, worst case, case scenario, yeah. Okay. Just preparing. Yeah. You asked see, the question I see, that I was going to ask, so I see Jen stiffening back there. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? For IT? No. <laughs> Fine. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> a couple other things. Uh, civil service. So uh, we've had a uh, employee now, former employee, who's acted as our civil service secretary for at least ten years. We know of if not longer um, and the pay for that position she was a full-time employee in another department now she has another full-time job but she's still doing the civil service the pay for civil service is 150 dollars a month mm -hmm. and then i think 150 dollars per test for civil for the sheriff or corrections or, or deputies she's doing a study going back as a number of years to see how many hours it takes in a given year but we haven't raised that for at least a decade. Uh, eight of the 11 comparator counties got back to me and everybody <coughs> does it differently. We by far are the lowest. A Soton County pays twice what we pay. Some counties it's in HR, two counties it's in HR, two it's in the commissioner's office, one it's in the sheriff's office, one it's the contract employee, one it's in the PA's office. So everybody deals with it a little bit differently, but we're required to have it. Uh, it's definitely not a full-time job, um, but um, it's clearly more than $150 a month. So we're just letting you know we're looking into it to, to see what um, what it could be, what it should be, but based on the number of hours in a given year, as the sheriff's department is seeing more turnover than the civil service function also um, incurs more hours and more expense to give tests. A lot of it's Saturday work. The tests are usually given on the weekends. It's more convenient for public to take the test. So. Is something we're looking into that hasn't been looked into for a very long time. So how do we how do we run that through payroll? I mean, is it a, is it like a stipend? Is it a I mean, it's one hundred fifty dollars a month. What? Yeah, no, she turns it in. I'm still trying to figure that out. Talking to Melanie, she she submits it to the auditor's office, and I think it's uh, it's like a ten ninety nine. I think it's it's not. Where, she's not on the payroll. Uh, some counties do it that. So it's way. like a contract. Yeah. I thought about a casual employee, but. Uh, Casey mentioned so many hours, then there'll be DRS, right. and, you know, and then the benefits will kick in and it potentially can make a pretty expensive position. So just trying to look at how other counties are doing it. We have to do it. Uh, there's no question about that. But how we do it, uh, clearly all the other counties are doing it differently. So we yeah. just need to figure out what works best for us. Uh, Melanie uh, is, is still willing to do it, but With a full-time job no longer working here, it's more inconvenience than it is worth the pay to her. So anyway, just letting you know, we're kind of looking into that. And I did talk to the board chair about it before I left that we're looking into it as well. So I know Jake knows about it. Solid waste uh, department update. Uh, most of this you probably know. I have a meeting today with Wendy from HDR to work on a proposed contract to be presented to the commissioners for consideration to do some level of study um, about the solid waste department um, to give us um, direction for the future. Uh, Michelle is meeting, met this morning with the adult probation on passing the litter grant over to that department. Um, Michelle has set Lynn and I up in the state system to manage the other two grants. So Lynn is 20%, uh, 25% of her time in, in um, is dedicated to solid waste. So uh, we'll be working on um, those other two grants. With the possible timeline of a possible contract consultant and the normal hiring and recruiting, uh, even if we move fairly quickly and you decided to restaff the uh, some or all of the department, I think we're at least 90 to 120 days out of any changes. I know Michelle's putting together a forward-looking calendar for at least the next 90 days, so we know what's what's out there to be done and needs to be done. But I think we're probably um, well into the budget cycle before we 
have enough information to present to you for a possible next steps. So. That that's kind of my concern is what uh, you know cleanup events are going to need to be canceled or postponed or or what you know fair booth how are we gonna you know do we need to shut all that down this year? I think, but I don't um, know. I think she mentioned and and. I, if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll get back to you that she hadn't committed to a fair booth yet. So, um, so that hadn't been, so it wouldn't be something we'd have to. Yeah. to that's, that's my biggest concern is how many people we gonna leave hanging um, last minute that we didn't even know about. I know Michelle's working very hard um, with some of those like the city of Goldendale to make sure that um, everybody's aware of what's going on and we don't drop the ball on anything. So I appreciate her efforts uh, to help us do that. So has she given us a list of everything um, that she had planned that, that won't be happening now? Working on that now. Yes. And that's it for the regular session, unless you have any questions. Um, I have a fiscal question that might get a brick thrown at me. So I'm kind of hesitant to... Stated. Just stretch this morning. See her right. Would it be wise? Um, no, never. To <laughs> the answer is always no. <laughs> have our financial guru um, look into landfill numbers for the past whatever five or six years to make sure the math uh, is the correct math and they didn't miss some interest um, or CPI adjustment or something. Um, going back in the last few years, so meaning all future numbers might be crooked. Um, I, if I may interject, I think word. Glenn kept pretty close eye on that. Prior to that, yeah, I would agree. Because there were um, there were mistakes caught and corrections made uh, in those prior to that. So I know. As I said, if there's but from that point missed, forward, we, whatever the yeah, yeah, and that's that's you would have more knowledge on that one on whether it needs to go two years or four years or when that last correction was found. Um, you know, I don't know how d deep this dive would be, but so that's what we want to make sure we're on the same page. So you're talking about the quarterly payments. You're talking about exactly what it is you want to go back and look at specifically. I I think it would be yeah the quarterly payments and the formula that they use to calculate, and then maybe some thoughts about how we even audit that because. Going going forward because that's you know it's obviously a topic of great interest to us and they um you know we i think we do need some way to be able to trust but verify the, the number because they kind of provide us with a number and here yeah. and the calculations and we need to figure out some fairly simple way i think to just kind of ground truth that our own way to verify not that I think there's anything there but there have been mistakes made in the past where they're calculate you know the CPIs were wrong they did especially the the formula is pretty complicated it can be it and, to be. Uh, and it, it appears to be a, a large complicated spreadsheet and right that potentially just a clerical person might be yeah it would be inputting some numbers and wrong and then they you know oh you know because we have had that before where it you know, it wasn't huge, I think, the last correction, but it was, you know, it was like 50 or 60,000. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's a lot of money to make a mistake, especially if it accumulates over time where it doesn't get factored into the new formula as a addition, then it, it exponentially just keeps on growing. And so I think that's- Was the mistakes that they made in the past on calculating the, the quarterlies or was it they forgot to add a zero to a certain county's quarterly um, tonnage. No, it wasn't, as I recall, it wasn't the tonnage, it was CPI, and then it was, it was the, 
because it's it's in the contract how that gets applied and when it gets applied right. Right. and there was a it either i assume it didn't get applied at the correct time and then there's the complexity around pulling out the snohomish county tonnage that has a different rate compared to the other ones and how that gets applied to that too and so it ended up they 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 just miscalculated it and it was the last one was a miscalculation of a cpi that they had tried to make an adjustment that just wasn't accurate yeah i think and i think um janet referenced it but if you look at the spreadsheet it can be just simple formulators i think glenn would do spot checks on formulas and right. the addition you know that much information in a right. spreadsheet can just there can just be simple errors in there that um, absolutely that's you all know, I and, I, and I don't it's, it's now under my watch so if we have not been doing that i want to make sure we've at least done it once we may not have quarterlies going forward forever who knows but until then i would like to make sure we double check them and I don't know, maybe thinking of some thoughts on the, and, and again, I don't even know how we would do it, but we, their tonnage numbers, we just take what they give us. Right. And I, I've often been curious that the auditors don't call that out because we don't really have any way, I don't know what it would be an effective way to actually check they have very good numbers as far as I'm assuming their numbers are really good because that's how they get paid right. and they give okay. us those numbers, but. Um, and I believe Ruby was getting tonnage reports. Yeah, right. so I don't know if it would be verifying that I'm I'm not familiar with those reports. But yeah, I look at it. And I said, we wouldn't know if you know Snohomish County was down 400 ton, but we'd know if they were down. 40,000 times yeah, from the previous quarter. Be like, mm. I mean, you can just comparing it to the last one, you can kind of get a trend um, other than COVID. And I don't know enough about uh, the compliance officer's role yet to, to know that if he would be in any position to, um, if that's even part of uh, his responsibility to track the trains coming in. And I, I, I know he inspects uh, containers for leakage and those kind of things. So I'm not sure if that's part yeah, I would of imagine his... as the containers are rolling over the scale, the scale gets built to right. Snohomish County or whatever. Right. I just think way. maybe it's sometimes which category that tonnage gets counted under. Lots of different categories, different types of waste. Right. Again, I have every reason to believe their numbers are accurate because that's how they build their customers. Unless it's just a typo on our right. graph and there's missing a zero. Right. And that's kind of what I'm saying, but we kind of can see those as we get the, right. the tonnage report. Yeah, we can only see it at a macro level where if we would notice, oh, yeah, why? what happened? Because we do get those quarterlies from them where we get the tonnage reports and they track the, you know, what's going on, you know, here's the, here's the historic you can kind of see what's going on and then um you know and depending on what happens with the economy we may we may be paying closer attention than we have been for the well, last and i know there's potential discussions going on the republic it might be good for them to educate some of us who don't know how they track the tonnage and how, what's the process is it all barcoded containers and trains yeah, and yeah my understanding i mean what i've observed in my my I guess anecdotal knowledge is I'm like they track there's a barcode on every single container they know when it when it appears at the scale I mean they track it through the whole system they can tell you where that waste is at any given moment and then when it gets to Roosevelt when it rolls over the scale they scan it they know oh that got put on they pulls up the report that got put on the train that came from Stomish County it took you know a day and a half to get here this is what it weighs. It goes up when it comes back out, it gets scanned on the way out. So they calculate the tonnage, the difference between, and then that gets billed to Snohomish for that's, you know, with so many tons, this is per their contract. And so they have every, they have every reason to have accurate numbers for that because those are their numbers. So anything we would find might be to their benefit. Uh, also, but it would just be nice sometime just maybe that we had an understanding institutionally for us to be able to explain that um, and to be comfortable with it um, just in the future. 
So my question would be is, is it is a very interesting formula. Would you be, could you read it and figure out the formula or do you need a contact with Republic to walk you through their formula kind of scenario? Because I'm sure if we made a phone call, we could find the right person to uh, you to have phone conversations or screen shares or whatever. I think I would have to study the contract and then right. compare it to the spreadsheet before I could answer that. Okay. Yeah, that would be sure. my advice is just yeah. take the, I mean, because the formula is laid out in the contract and then you could look at the spreadsheet as far as like, oh, I think this is what they're doing and understand it and then. And I do think there are some discussions between Jen and the treasurer because you know, there's kind of overlap and it is revenue. So I know Greg's been working with her in the past. So maybe they could. Yeah, that would be another yeah. good set of eyes on there. Absolutely. We've been brainstorming. Because this is a function as we, ultimately recommend to you and you determine that what solid waste looks like going forward this is a critical critical function we know needs to right needs to be done somewhere by someone that's not going to go away so uh, it's it's um gonna help educators going forward so thank you for not throwing i told you you'd have to come up good i'm not saying anything today <laughs> i tried yeah, i tried <laughs> okay Unless there's any questions, commissioners, I'm ready to go into an executive session as per. Thank you. You, 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 you were going to say you're going to make me suffer for a minute. All right. right, we're going to go into executive session with human resources um, in accordance with RCW 42.30.110 Pren I Pren G to review the performance, discipline, and qualifications okay. of a public employee. Issues of a general nature will be discussed in open session. We. Hey guys, would somebody give me a call on the main phone? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Hold on. Is it the same RCW number? Or do I got to find a different? It's one? all the same. It's just not different G. letter. It's E I. I don't know. Is G. Oh, it's on this one? Oh. RCW 4230-144. Parentheses four is what is on this. Oh, so it's a different number. It's a, a, oh. That's, it's a closed session. It's a 42.30. Yeah. Dot 140, parentheses four, subsection four. That's what you said. That's what I heard. All right. 42.30.140, print four. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, baby. Just when I think I got it, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Zoom people, we will be, please uh, log yourself off. We'll be closing down Zoom um, until after the executive session. Um, there will not be any more communication. We'll just go straight to lunch after that, and we'll see you all back at 1 o'clock.